there's a lot of debate over what effective discipline looks like for the next generation. In 2012, a national survey showed that more than half of women and three quarters of men in the United States believe that many children sometimes just need a good, hard spanking. <laughs> With four children, like many parents, my husband and I also wondered, what is appropriate discipline? As a child development expert, I wanted to give good advice to support parents. For example, if spanking was so effective, then why do we have the problems we have today? There are also a lot of things we used to do in the past that are not considered appropriate today. For example, as a child, I didn't wear seatbelts, but that doesn't mean I don't wear seatbelts today. If we keep doing things just because they've always been done that way, then we wouldn't have child labor laws or advance in technology. So just like a judge, I decided to look to science for evidence on physical punishment. What I discovered was that researchers say physical punishment actually alters the brain. One 2009 study concluded exposing children to harsh corporal punishment, which was defined as at least one spanking a month, frequently done with objects such as a belt or paddle, may have detrimental effects on brain development. Researchers found children who were regularly spanked had less gray matter in certain areas of the prefrontal cortex of the brain. That gray matter we've all been beating out of our children is actually the key to the brain's ability to learn self-control. According to a 2011 study that appeared in the Journal of Cognitive Neuroscience, the more gray matter you have in the prefrontal cortex of your brain, the better your ability to evaluate rewards and consequences. In other words, the more we physically punish our kids for their lack of self-control, the less they have. I found it interesting that researchers also found significant correlations between the amount of gray matter in these brain regions and the children's performance on an IQ test. In short, I couldn't find any evidence to support positive outcomes of spanking. As a behavioral consultant, one concern I always had about spanking was the idea that anyone is going to momentarily stop what they're doing if someone hits them, but it doesn't teach the child what they should be doing. And isn't teaching children the right thing the whole point of discipline? So what are some alternatives? Teaching children what they should do teaching anger management, appropriate ways for siblings to resolve their conflicts. We use bugs and wishes. It bugs me when you do this. I wish you would do that instead. Teaching children what to do when they are frustrated. I never leave the house without my cranky spray. Some water and vanilla extract. Hmm, very calming. I have to admit, I've resorted to physical punishment or threats because it's quick and my children would stop bad behavior because they were afraid of being hit. But it doesn't work in the long term. My son was the same, my same height when he was 11. <laughs> it turns out good discipline isn't quick or easy, but I tell parents to focus on prevention. In my parent workshops, the most asked question is what do I do when my child has a tantrum? Research shows the only thing you can do is write it out. But afterwards, take time to reflect on the cause of that tantrum. Many a tantrum was caused not by my child, but because they were tired or hungry or they were confused by a change in the schedule. When my children were young, I avoided a lot of tantrums by anticipating my child's needs. Ironically, many of my children's behaviors were resolved by adjusting my behavior. I can't tell you how getting their clothes ready at night or getting myself up a half an hour earlier changed my children's behavior. Warnings like three more swings before we leave the park gave my children time to adjust to transitions. Packing a goodbye bag with water, snacks, and dollar store toys my children only saw when they left the house was the perfect solution when we made trips to the store or the doctor's office. Lastly, don't sweat the small stuff. 
If they want to wear mismatched socks, let them. Letting them decide what they do first, when they're getting ready for bed, or what clothes they want to wear, make those routines easier. When your children don't follow directions, why do you assume there's something wrong with your children and not with your directions? <laughs> you can't expect something your child doesn't understand. If you want your child's room clean, make it a game. Turn on the cleanup music and challenge them to clean up before the music stops. Or stop nagging your teen by taking a photo of the room clean and telling them to refer to photo and make it match. <laughs> For more of these ideas, please listen to Angela Searcy's Simple Solutions Show every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time on globalnewsforum.com. Feel free to share your own parenting questions or solutions. Don't he hesitate to contact me at acircea at aol.com for more ideas.